going on with you guys? What is going on with you guys today? This is Soapbox Heroes. My name is Tyrone Irvin. Oh, yeah. I was I was attempting to go live, but I was suffering from buffering. So I'm going to come over here and holler at you guys like this. I want to talk about this, uh, this, 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 this. What do we got? This election between these two guys right here. Between the Step Brothers. Oh, yes. There's a lot going on. I have literally taken the back seat to this thing. I am kind of passively watching it. I am not lending it all of my energy and time because there's so much hyperbole, misinformation, and favoritism, you know, based on whoever it is that you like to make a guy like me just want to back up for a little while. But I do want to talk about a few things real quick. I want to talk about things that I have learned from this election thus far. I have learned to not listen to polls, right? Now, this is something that I I already don't do, but I, I'm even further in my thought when it comes to not listening to polls, right? The polls for this particular election were so off. They were so off. It was crazy. It was like, what am I listening to you guys for? Because you guys are actively giving us bad information through these polls. A lot of the ways that the polls are gathered, the people that they call, don't nobody got landlines. And then when people call you and, hey, who are you going to vote for? You just hang up on them. So these polls are very, very inaccurate. But people seem to hinge their beliefs and their emotions based on these polls and things like that. You did. So that's something that I have learned to, you know, over time to not put too much into is a particular poll because, you know, a poll could very well lean directly towards the sentiment of the person who made up the poll. You dig? <laughs> so we so we so so that's polling. And then triangulation. Triangulation. As I said, I've I've been tacitly watching the elections. I haven't been all, you know, knee deep with no sleep in it. In fact, I've gotten a lot of work done. I've been, you know, I've been at peace because I haven't been locked into it. But the parts that I do watch is hilarious. And I'm going to be honest with you. The first time that I watched, the first time I tuned in on November 3rd, I purposely did not tap in to any debate, debate, I mean, not debates, any election coverage. I didn't look at any social media about the election. I went out. I voted. I voted. I did my thing, thing. You know what I'm saying? And I went back home. I got dressed, came to the office, and got a whole bunch of work done. And I told myself on purpose, I am not going to tune in to these things. But what I did do before I did tune in, and I tuned in at about what? About 9 p.m. Central, about 10 p.m. Central, somewhere near there. I know I tuned in when they said that the polls on the West Coast were closed, right? And when they said the polls on the West Coast, Coast were closed, I told myself, all right, before I go ahead and get into the drama, before I go ahead and get into the drama, let me look and see, or, or let me sit here and try to guess what's going on. So let me go over here, you guys. I'm going to go back and tell you guys what I thought before I even watched it, all right? Because I, I think it's important, and, and this was a great experiment for me because it gave me a chance to see, to see how you feel when news is pushed at you at the speed and veracity that is being pushed at us right now. And and I got to enjoy when I found and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the different commentary. I found it entertaining. I found some of the stuff that people are saying on social media. I found it very, very entertaining. And um, you know, so let me see. Let me get down. So I, I put on I put on on the book, on the Facebook. I said, I haven't watched or looked at any election coverage all day. The polls on the West Coast are closing, so I'll tune in now to see what's up. Let me make a few, a few projections, predictions, before I get swept up 
into the fuckery. <laughs> excuse my French. Why do people say excuse my French when they're talking English? I don't know, but excuse my French. Okay, and so this is these were my predictions. Mind you, I hadn't seen any coverage all day. And so I made my predictions, and then I went on to look at the coverage, and I kind of giggled, all right? Because these things are, a lot of these things aren't new. A lot of these things we have seen in repetitiousness or in repetition over and over again. I just think sometimes we get swept up in the moment that we forget we've seen a lot of these same things in prior elections, all right? So the first thing I said, I said, they started off showing mail-in, they started off showing mail-in ballots and early voting numbers early in the day. And then in, and then in parentheses, I said, get the people excited too, too early for nothing. And when I said that is because I, I watched this happen in the past, and then I knew with the amount of uh, the early votes and the mail-in votes and things of that nature, I knew that there has already been projections and, you know, based on what I've seen anecdotally, there's already been a certain demographic of people who took early voting very seriously. So I knew that there was going to be a, a high a high number of early vote numbers early in the day. And I knew they were going to project that knowing damn well that they were going to have to count the votes of the people who actually physically went out and voted on November 3rd. And I say, well, they're going to start reporting those, and then the numbers are going to even up and get tighter later on. And then people are going to be like, what happened? What happened? But again, that was just the first thing that I said, all right? Let me see. Number two, I said polling is off just like last time. We already discussed that. Polling is way off. There was, there was places that predicted a Biden win by eight, nine points, six, seven points. These places are neck and neck. Neck and neck. All right. And again, and these projections have been coming at us for months and months and months. Very reminiscent of hmm, Hillary Clinton, 2016. All right. I said, um, number three, Trump is running closer than predicted by the media pundits and my social media feed, <laughs> because my social media feed in particular makes it as if, you know, well, it seemed as if Joe Biden was going to have this big blue wave. He was going to win all these states. And and I personally feel as if that's that wasn't what I felt as if that wasn't going to be true because I talked to a lot of people who are not necessarily in the same box. And so when you start talking to other people of other demographics and other places, you realize that this thing is going to be a lot tighter than people think. And also with the bullying we got, we got people, you get bullied, you get bullied, you get ridiculed, you will get put down if you are in the wrong circle when you say you want to vote or your predilections toward a certain candidate isn't the same predilections or feelings of the people in that circle. And so on my timeline, on my algorithm, on my feed, if somebody was to be a conservative, they would get beat down so much to where they wouldn't say it anymore. But you better believe that they were going to go and pull that lever for the person that they wanted to vote for in the first place. They just stopped saying it. So all the vitriol that people are given, all it really does is it kind of makes them quiet. And then on election day, we always get surprised and be like, the polling numbers are off. It's because people no longer want to tell the truth. What is the benefit of telling the truth? If all you're going to do is get piled on over it. All right. And I think that's very dangerous because we live in a time where people are having very different experiences. Even people of the same races and same colors are, are having different experiences in life. And sometimes we expect everybody to have the same mono, uh, what is it? Monolithic thought about everything. OK, so if people are growing up different and they're experiencing different things in life, they 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 have different perceptions of things then they may vote differently. They may vote, vote differently. But nowadays, if these people have a difference, they can't say it because one person is going to get ridiculed by hundreds of people after that. And so what I think that does is it makes people shut down and hold on to the truth. And when people hold on to the truth, of course, you are going to get bad polling numbers. All right. So let me see. Then after that, I said, um, 
Trump is running closer than predicted by media pundits. Oh, I said that already. People are doing all kind of math over dele- delegate numbers in swing states. Now, this is obvious that every single election they're counting Pennsylvania, Florida, Ohio, Michigan. Um, these are called battleground states, right? These are the states with, you know, the elections and in, in, well, let me say elections as of late, but even elections in the past, but at least what the last three, four elections. And when we talk about three or four elections, we have to understand that these things aren't things that happen every other day. They happen every four years. So four elections is four, eight, 12, 16 years. Okay. Every election, they are talking about the same battleground states. All the voting going on, and and if I'm not mistaken, this particular election, people showed record turnout. So with all the turnout and all these things going on, it still comes down to a certain amount of states. You guys remember the hanging chads down in Florida? It's always Ohio. It's always Florida. It's always, you know, these, these certain states that seem to hold the keys to the election, right? Especially when the elections are tight, and so that was one of my um, that was one of my predictions because it always happens. Um, let me see. Latinos and blacks are going to vote more for Trump than last time. Well, I got that, and again, that was anecdotal because there was no way that I could possibly really get numbers that I can um, prove statistically, but just anecdotally and talking to people again and listening to different people's perspectives and their thoughts, to me it was quite obvious. And then when you look at the um, the Democratic side, you see that they weren't offering a lot of minorities too much of anything but lip service. And I think at this point in time, the, the at this inflection point in time that we are at now, People want things that actually mean something. People are tired of symbolism. People are tired of political arrogance. And in my opinion, the Democrats are just arrogant when it comes to minority votes. And based on the undercurrent of things that I've seen, I've seen the the ADOS movement, the FBA movement, which was stolen from the ADOS movement, which now I find funny because there are some black people saying, well, these movements were probably started to Make black people be Republican. Well, I would say anybody with that um, with that antidote is probably somebody who wants to keep black people as Democrats. <laughs> and I personally say black people need to do whatever is good for black people. Vote for your predilections. Vote for what's good for you. But with all these different undercurrents, um, it was some MMA fighter. I don't remember his name, but... He told uh, Joe Biden, you're not going to be able to just get your cell phone and play bachata, bachata. I don't know if that's literally the name of the song, but he was pretty much saying that you guys are not going to just give us lip service and get our get our votes. And so we are seeing an undercurrent of that and we are seeing a populist movement. I think that's a lot of why Donald Trump got elected in 2016 was because people assumed he was a populist. The rise of Bernie Sanders and all the power and strength behind him because people thought he was a populist. People are very tired of this mundane establishment politician in which we keep going and which which we keep getting. So I completely understood that. Well, I completely believe that Donald Trump would do better with minorities because a lot of people are starting to look at all the news and things of that like of that nature And people don't believe everything they hear. We have a lot of independent journalism. We have a lot of people who are like now reading things and taking things for its full context. And people just don't necessarily believe everything they hear. So that's why I assumed. (coughs) Excuse me. That's why I assumed that, um, you know, that he that Trump would do better with minorities. All right. And, the, and this is all before watching. This is November 3rd. You can go look at it. It's, it's all before watching anything on television about the election. All right, I got a few more. I said um, Biden is going to win the senior vote. which And I got that because I was thinking, you know what? The people who are affected the most by COVID are our seniors, our seniors. 
and the people who are watching the news the most about COVID and in taking that information as 100% the truth. And I'm not saying what is the truth or what isn't the truth. That is not my position. I'm not here to do that. But the people internalizing it the most, in my opinion, have been seniors. And so when you think of that and, and, and the way that um, Joe Biden has been articulating himself about COVID as if he's going to be the, you know, the comforter and the guy that makes things better. I do think that that, that appeal did appeal to seniors. OK, and so I put that, um, you know, Biden is going to win the senior vote. I put Biden will make the race close in some traditionally red states, Texas, Arizona, Florida, in Georgia. All right. And mind you guys, this is all before I looked at any of this stuff. Hey, the vote won't all be counted for weeks. <laughs> Nine. Um, someone is at home wondering why Ohio, Pennsylvania, Florida seems to be so important. Ten. Democrats hold the House. Eleven. Republicans hold the Senate. Uh, Twelve. Nevada goes red by a point or two. 13, Latinos push Trump over in Florida. All right? Here, let me look at some more. And, and I'm not positive if I'm, I'm correct on all of these things. Some of them might be wrong. Don't throw me away if I'm wrong. I said that later in the, in the post. All right? Then I said um, Latinos push Trump over in Florida. I think Texas is almost purple but still red. Pennsylvania is leaning blue, Michigan, Biden, and this was on the third. I said, no rioting yet. The West Coast just shut down polls. Um, let me see what else I put. I put voter turnout is super high. And then I put most of these assumptions are based on listening to people, and some are based on the last election. Some I talk about all the time. If I'm wrong, do not throw me away. So look, and so this came from me without looking at any of it, all right? But what I think is very important right now is I don't want us to get so comfortable. If, if Biden wins, my, my fear is that people are going to get so comfortable that we are going to... Yeah, so so that's my fear that if Biden wins, that we are all of a sudden going to go back into sheep mode. I was looking at some police data and some statistics the other day on police murders and, and pol police killing, and I started to figure out that all the numbers are the same. The numbers of deaths are very they're eerily similar throughout Republican administration. Democrat administration, Republican administration, Democrat administration. I've been looking at poverty. I've been looking at homelessness. And these things really, really just kind of remain even and grow no matter what party that the president is in. And so I start to say to myself, I hope we don't become sheep and think just because there's somebody else in office that all of these things all of a sudden no longer matter. All right. All of these things no longer matter. And that is my biggest fear. One of my biggest fears is this. There is a um, there's a newspaper publication, if I'm not mistaken, it's The Intercept. And one of and one of the founders of The Intercept had to resign last week. Well, he didn't have to resign. Anytime you resign, I guess it's a choice. Duh, Tyrone. But he resigned, and he was one of the people who founded this publication. And if it's not The Intercept, I'll come back and I'll make sure I, that I artic articulate the right publication. So don't quote me, but I am thinking it's The Intercept. Well, his partners had threatened to censor him if he didn't remove negative information about Joe Biden from a story. Okay? Now, these are the things that really, really make me afraid when we have publications that won't that won't accurately publish things because they want to protect a certain agenda. Now, I would say the same thing if the same thing was happening for or with Donald Trump. See, for me, it's not about the who. It's about the what. 
It's about the what. And so I don't want us to become sheep. All right. All right. And 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 and, and while we're in the rat race and while I'm watching these sheep run in circle, <laughs> while I'm watching these sheep behind me getting herded, it makes me think of this. All right. Now is a perfect time to get engaged in politics. Right now. Not November or let's see, October of 2022 or October of 2024. And let's just skip 22 because we know voting in the midterms, we know the numbers are like minute. So you shouldn't wait till 2024 to get involved politically. I think that's a mistake we make. We think that November 3rd is the end of the process. I think November 3rd is the beginning of the process. Because if you start paying attention to the politicians and things now, then you know who to hold accountable. You know when you're being lied to. You know when people are just trying to tell you things to throw you misdirection because they know that you only pay attention for two or three months leading up to an election. So I think that the way that we have the model right now is completely backwards. I think that you should start being engaged right now, right now, <laughs> because then what ends up happening is happening is you become engaged in something uh, in, in October of 2024 and you are trying to explain all these things that you just learned in one week to people who have been engaged for years and years and years and they could see the um the manipulation they can see how people are being played with the things like that all right so i would suggest now being the perfect time all right you dig let me see what else what else i i wrote a couple things down that i wanted to talk about today i said let me write them down real quick <laughs> All right. And I also said I well, I also said I also wrote to myself. I said this is also a good time to remember people are going to try to move you on fast. They're going to want to make you move fast. And and the reason I said this is because I saw a guy I saw a post from um ah from Roland Martin and Roland Martin. It was something about. These crybaby Bernie Sanders people are in here crying because Bernie isn't the nominee. Now it's not a time to cry. This, that, and the third. And the first thing that made me think is, yeah, people always want you to move on from the past when they don't want to talk about the relevance of it. Okay. And so, of course, yes, you should move on. We should always move on. But it is very important to remember what happened so we can recognize these things and not make the same mistake. If Anybody wants you to move on from the primaries and not bring up the last primary season, it's because they don't want you to remember the next primary season. And if we don't remember the last primary season, like we didn't remember the primary season in 2016, we're going to keep ending up with these terrible, terrible, terrible candidates. <laughs> we're going to keep ending up with these terrible candidates. And so when somebody sprinkles in there hey hey you know what remember the primaries and people say oh then now is not a time to talk about that well it's never a convenient time to talk about things that need change when somebody doesn't want to change it so they're going to keep trying to move you on keep moving you on like these sheep just keep on going. come on come on let me heard you they want you to move on and then the only time they want to bring up the past is when it's advantageous toward their narrative but what I'm saying is, of course, don't hold on to the past. If you're a, if you're a Bernie bro or, you know, if you're a Bernie supporter, I'm not saying to, you know, to, to just hold on to it to where you can't move forward politically or as a person in this country. But what I am saying is it's perfectly OK to remind people of what they feel like right now. It is perfectly OK to remind people. What led up to us having these terrible candidates? Because with the speed of news, people are destined to forget. A lot of people are destined to forget. And being that people are very much only engaged in election season, it makes it a little bit difficult to try to, um, to carry these sustaining topics 
and these sustaining differentials in news and in honesty to somebody who only catches on once three months before November every th- every four years, all right? Because there's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of things that happen in the middle of that, and we are getting played with a lot. We are definitely getting played with a lot, all right? And so those are just some of the things that I wanted to talk about. Cheating, election cheating. Okay, this is my thing. It, it all hinges on who you who you are, who you... What, who are you a political hack for? Who are you a political hack for? Are you a democratic political hack? Because if you're a democratic political hack, you're going to say this. There's no cheating. There's no cheating. I saw people, soon as somebody, as soon as Trump says something about cheating, they're, they're, that's not true. It's impossible. And I would always ask people, well, how do you know what's impossible before you know the detail or before you even know why he's saying that? Now, if you're a Republican and if you're a Trumper, and if that is, if you're a political hack to the left, (laughs) opposed to a political hack to the right, then you don't need no evidence. Of course they're cheating. Everything is cheating besides winning. Now, do I think that the Democrats would have done, done lawsuits if they were coming out losing in some of these states and they were down in the numbers? Yes, Like I said, the first time I turned it on the other day, I turned it on November 3rd at around between 9 and 10 o'clock. And when I turned on the news, oh, my goodness, I I flipped on to CNN. I like CNN because their graphics are the best. They have a wonderful graphics department. (laughs) I don't watch them for the news. I watch them for the graphics. I think the graphics are dope, right? And so as I'm sitting there, they're so somber. And they're so sad. And, And... and they don't know what to do because the polls are wrong, the, the race is tight, and, and, and they were talking about Russian interference. See, when the Democrats thought they were losing, they were talking about Russian interference. I switch over to MSNBC, and they're like, it's, the, it's, it's because more white supremacists came out to vote. He got more white supremacists to come out and vote. And Russian interference. So they were already setting up their reasons. They were setting up their excuses the same way that you look at the Republicans. They were like, voter irregularities. These these mail-in votes, they're they're finding votes in the trash can. (laughs) The water pipe bust in the gym, and it went all the GOP votes, we're guessing. (laughs) Everybody was setting up for an argument. Everybody was setting up for their case in court. So do I think that it's just one side trying to make this? No. But again, if you are a political hack for one side or the other, you're just going to come up with these snap judgments. Do I believe it's possible that people cheated in this election? Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody hates Donald Trump. (laughs) Not everybody, but a large number of people hate him. And do I think that people wouldn't mind just throwing trash cans full of ballots away? Yes. Do I think that people wouldn't mind adding ballots, you know, for that are are opposing to him? Yes. Do I also think that Donald Trump will cheat if possible? Yes. Yes. So if you're a political hack, you're a political hack. I might not be the guy for you. Because I'm just going to cut it right down the middle and tell you how it is. You dig? How it is. Don't don't be one of these sheep back here. (laughs) Do not be one of these sheep. All right? Don't be one of them sheep, you guys. That is not what you want to do. And so as of now, they still haven't came up with who the president is. All right? It is looking like Joe Biden is going to be the president of these here United States of America. I don't know if anybody can literally say that they're surprised. They say it's a selection, not an election. <laughs> I say take it how you wanna. Both these well, both these guys right here are a joke. <laughs> 
Do I think that they're going to fundamentally change America? No, no, no. I think they are both for whatever special interest that they have. Again, you guys, do you know this? I think, if I'm not mistaken, $15 billion on an election. How many systemic problems could have been solved or at least put a dent in it? How many schools could have been built? How many computers could be in your kid's classroom? How many people sitting at home right now, out of a job, could have used some of that money to get them over until the, uh, 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 the virus is over? So yeah, you guys, don't get all caught up in the minutia, and I just would like to ask you guys to make sure that after this election, you do not go to sleepy sleep. <laughs> And night night <laughs> Night night Alright And that is my biggest fear I am thinking that so many people You political hacks you I think that you guys put so much intestinal fortitude I mean the intestinal fortitude that you guys put Into these candidates I think you guys put so much into them You guys justify their wrongs so much you guys highlight their rights even when they're wrong to the point to where I don't think you will be honest about holding them accountable because you're not going to want to say that I was wrong. That's the thing about trying to choose a winner. When you're trying to choose a winner for somebody else, but you're not trying to choose a winner for you. You can't hold them accountable. Well, it's going to be hard to hold them accountable. Can you imagine you spent the last five or six months telling somebody how good some uh, candidate is and all the positive things they did and, and you've ex over exaggerated about the good and act like there is no bad that exists. And you've been castigating aspersions against your fellow man, your friends. You've been cutting people off and you guys have been swiping at each other. Yeah, you political hacks. Are you going to be able to hold these politicians accountable now that you put your neck on the line for them? Are you? Are you? I mean, after months and months and months of pretending as if your particular candidate is perfect, are you going to feel as if you have to keep up that charade? I hope not. I hope not. I hope not. This has been Soapbox Heroes. You guys, much peace and love. I'm about to get on up out of here. I'm about to get up out of here. Make sure that you guys go follow on YouTube. It's the Soapbox Heroes channel. Check me out on the Instagrams. On the grams. Check me on the gram. At Irvin Tyrone. E-R-V-I-N dot T-Y-R-O-N-E or just type in Soapbox Heroes. Hey, you guys, much love, peace, respect, and do not go back to sleep. Here, let me show y'all again. Do not go back to sleep. Don't be sheep. Don't let them treat you like sheeple and herd you back to sleep. Systemic problems that need to be changed, let's make sure that they get changed. Let's not just accept wrongdoing or just accept wrong because it's the guy that I told everybody was great. Peace. There was nothing.